At the Democratic National Convention, held in Institute Hall in Charleston, South Carolina, in April 1860, 50 Southern Democrats walked out over a platform dispute led by the extreme pro-slavery William Loudon's Yancey and the Alabama delegation. Following them were the entire delegations of Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Texas, three of the four delegates from Arkansas, and one of the three delegates from Delaware. Six candidates were nominated, Stephen A. Douglas from Illinois, James Gerthrou from Kentucky, Robert Mercer Hunter from Virginia, Joseph Lane from Oregon, Daniel S. Dickinson from New York, and Andrew Johnson from Tennessee. On the 59th ballot, the remaining Democrats nominated Stephen A. Douglas for president, while Benjamin Fitzpatrick from Alabama was nominated for vice president, and he refused the nomination. After the convention concluded with no vice presidential nominee, Stephen A. Douglas offered the vice presidential nomination to Herschel V. Johnson from Georgia, who accepted. The Republican National Convention met in mid-May 1860 in Chicago, Illinois. William H. Seward from New York was considered the front runner, followed by Salmon P. Chase from Ohio and Missouri's Edward Bates. Abraham Lincoln from Illinois was lesser known and was not considered to have a good chance against Seward. The first round of voting produced a lead for Seward, but not a majority, with Lincoln in second place. The second round eliminated most of the minor contenders, with voters switching to Seward or mostly to Lincoln. On the third ballot on May 18th, Lincoln secured the presidential nomination overwhelmingly. Senator Hannibal Hamlin from Maine was nominated for vice president defeating Cassius M. Clay. The delegates who walked out of the convention at Charleston, South Carolina in April reconvened in Richmond, Virginia on June 11th. They adapted the pro-slavery platform and nominated Vice President John C. Breckinridge for president and Senator Joseph Lane for vice president. Breckinridge was the last sitting vice president nominated for president until Richard Nixon in 1960. 1860 Democratic Party ticket. U.S. Senator Stephen A. Douglas for president, 41st Governor of Georgia Herschel V. Johnson for vice president, Republican ticket, former U.S. Representative Abraham Lincoln for president, U.S. Senator Hannibal Hamlin for vice president, Southern Democratic ticket, 14th Vice President of the United States John C. Breckinridge for president, U.S. Senator Joseph Lane for vice president, constitutional ticket, former U.S. Senator John Bell for president, former U.S. Senator Edward Everett for vice president, Liberty Party ticket, former Representative Jared Smith for president, People's Party ticket, Governor of Texas Sam Houston for president. Voter turnout was 81.2%, the highest in American history up to that time. There were no ballots distributed for Abraham Lincoln in Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and in Texas. Constitutional nomination John Bell received 590,000 popular votes. Southern Democratic John Breckinridge received 848,000 popular votes. Northern Democratic Stephen Douglas received 1.3 million popular votes. And Republican Abraham Lincoln received 1.8 million popular votes. Northern Democratic candidate Stephen Douglas received 12 electoral votes. Constitutional nominee John Bell received 39 electoral votes. Southern Democratic nominee John Breckinridge received 72 electoral votes, and Republican nominee Abraham Lincoln received 180 electoral votes. Lincoln's victory and imminent inauguration as president was the immediate cause for declarations of succession by seven southern states, being South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas. They then formed the Confederate States of America. Lincoln took no action against the secessionists in the seven Confederate states, but also declared that secession had no legal validity and refused to surrender federal property in those states. The standoff continued until mid-April when Confederate President Jefferson Davis ordered Confederate troops to bombard and capture Fort Sumter. President Lincoln then called for troops to put down the rebellion, which wiped out the possibility that the crisis could be resolved peacefully. Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina joined the Confederacy immediately after.